Hello, this is my new tutorial for Rhino or other similar CAD programs and it's on how to model a car. It will highlight many important parts and techniques. First, I just wanted to say thanks for the subscriptions and the positive comments. I also wanted to say thanks for being patient for those of you who have been waiting for my new tutorial. I know I have been promising a better tutorial and I kept saying soon. Well, I have finally finished it. So here is a preview of what we are going to attempt to model in Rhino or a similar CAD program. As you can see, it is a freestyle of the 458. I experimented with a longer rear end to give it a long and sleeker look. I originally wanted to do it in 10 to 20 minutes, but that proved to be difficult. This new tutorial is two and a half hours long. It covers the exterior of the car. It shows many tools and techniques that I like to use when creating simple to complex surfaces. I have a condensed version here that highlights the main points and speeds up the tedious or redundant parts. You can contact me for the full version. It will have full audio commentary that explains my direction and theories deeper. I hope you like it and I hope that you find it useful. So at one point or another during this video, you're probably going to be thinking, Take a look, his speed, his ferocity, his training. You should be thinking, I see the power of belief. So I would actually take a look at the whole video first. That way you have an idea of what I'm going to do since I'm moving kind of fast in this video. Well, it's because I sped many parts up, so I'm not really moving that fast. So the reason I am speeding up the detailing parts or the wire drawing is because wire drawing it is something that comes from within. I can't teach you how to draw the wires or the lines. Everyone has their own style and with that style is their own level of accuracy. If you don't know how to draw lines yet, this tutorial might not be for you. You shouldn't attempt this until you, you can at least draw the lines in all four angles, that's the best I can say about that, and obviously when I had the four lines I used network surface, and Rhino will try its best to make a surface from those four or three lines, and uh, like for the front fender, you can use more defining lines or interior lines, and this is for a more controlled surface. Right here, what I'm doing is I am extending the surface, just type extend surface and pick the edge you want to extend. It only works for untrimmed surfaces. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to trim it since it's a complex panel and there's, there's more than four edges technically. So if you just follow this part, you'll see what I'm doing here using lines and using the trim tool. This part right here, to make the door, I use tangency for the bottom edge so that it is a smooth effect or a fillet effect. And uh, some people would like to call it fillet. I'm going to call it fillet just because uh, I like that sound better. But you can see I used it again for the tan tangency for uh, network surface. And then this uh, infamous door handle. I'm doing a little craziness here, but if you just follow it, you'll see what I'm doing. I'm making multiple pieces, and then I am going to use merge surface. And what that does is it merges two untrimmed surfaces together as long as they are matching exactly on the edge. And I'm showing you that here. You see how it merges nicely there? And it becomes one surface from four surfaces. And then I use the rebuild tool to smooth it out, and it's a bit smoother. And I merge again, and that's how you make a really complex surface into one surface. What I'm doing here is I'm just rebuilding the rear fender scoop again for consistency and tangency. And then when I get to the tail light, all you have to do is draw the profile of the bullet and use the revolve tool as the center point of the circle. And then what I did here is I drew the profile of the spoiler and I used the sweep one tool. It's easy 
to use, and it's good for guessing how surface will end, even if you don't know. And right there, I just used the split tool, and it's a split ISO curve, and it split the surface along its interior curves. It's a pretty useful tool to use. And for the next few parts, it's going to be pretty redundant with more network surfacing. Don't forget your tangency for areas that will match another surface. There's going to be more trimming and splitting if you draw the defining lines. Cut it. I also want to mention Sweep 2 tool. It's very useful, like Sweep 1, except you pick two edges. And also the blend tool for curves. You pick one end and another end and it will blend the curve for tangency. It's pretty useful. I used it already on sweep two. Just wanted to mention that since I'm moving kind of fast here. In this technique here, what I'm doing is I'm drawing a polyline. And the angle that I think that surface is going to go, and then I'm offsetting it and moving it a little bit, and I'm using the blend tool, the blend curves tool, to create a fillet, and then I do that for the next edge, and then I use the sweep one tool, and this is how you would get surfaces for rails, or, you know, as you can see here, it's doing an, an edge-like surface. Sort of like playing when it's a lot more intuitive. You're going to be using this technique a lot. You're going to be doing a lot of blending and then using tangency to make edges. My philosophy is to keep each body panel very simple. You don't want to use too many different surfaces to create the panel. You want to keep it at a minimum. And if you have to introduce fillet edge or fillet, it can get tricky because even though Rhino has, you know, this automatic tool that can do it for you and it's pretty fancy, eventually you're still going to have to go in there and manually make some fillets or fill in some holes. So it's best that you get used to it now. And we're here for the hood. The reason why I made it go across like that instead of drawing that really Acute circle is because when you try to network the surface, it's going to make you really funky surfaces. So just basically loft it across like I did and then chop it so that you don't have this acute looking surface. If you don't believe me, give it a try, you'll see. And for the front end, you know, I, I saw the concept image for the, four, the 450 before the Italia was showcased and Front end looked a lot better for the concept, and then when the Italian came, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who had the first impression that the front end looked really funny. It had sort of like that catfish mustache thing going on. So for my freestyle, I, I chose to do something a little different. As you will begin to see, I'm doing something that's, I guess, a bit more conservative for uh, it flows with the body better. Now, don't get me wrong. I know why Ferrari did it. They wanted it to be, you know, special or unique. They wanted to stand out and not be the conventional design. So they went with that catfish approach. Still don't buy that aerodynamic bit. Now, for the rear fender spoiler, what I did was I did the ISO curve split, which permanently splits the surface into two pieces. Then used the blend tool between the two surfaces to create tangency. Network some new surfaces and use the merge surface tool. And that is how you get a complex surface and single surface. Now for the wheel arch, it's the same technique that I was using for the edge rail. Just draw the polyline again and use the blend tool once again. And just do some sweeps or sweep twos. And that's how you get the wheel arches with the tangency. And you do this to avoid using the flay tool later because, again, it's a great tool, but it's going to cause some holes or some headaches. It always does because some surfaces are just not clean. 
when they don't meet together exactly. Now moving on to the canopy. Again, it's just simple network surfacing with some defining lines. And you see here that I am I went ahead and do the lines for the front and rear windshields. And then I am trimming here down the middle because it is a complex surface. So just pay attention to what I'm doing here to create the canopy because it's not the usual four sided or three sided surface. And a lot of times when you're modeling, you're creating complex surfaces, you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to imagine the surface as a whole before it was trimmed so that you can have this complete surface instead of having five or six pieces create this complex surface where it just looks kind of messy with too many seams. So I hope you understand why I did this part. It's pretty self explanatory, but you know, it gets to be the surface. Now, to network, the windshield, what I did was I duplicated some lines and joined them all together as a single surface for the top half. And then I trimmed it or split it actually at the corners where it curves and then network the surface. That way, it's still a four-sided surface and you can get it to look really clean and it doesn't have like some kind of mobly shape or anything like that. Okay, and then we have more network surfacing and more tangents here to avoid delaying any sorts of depth. Now, this part right here gets a little bit more complicated. I use the intersection tool. I pick the bullet tail light and the rear fender and I use intersect and what that did was it created lines for the intersection, the two surfaces, and then I projected it to the C plane, which would be to the zero plane from the top view. That way I could edit the intersection and draw basically the cutout for the rear fender and then basically just Move that part out and chop the fender. You should see here that I am rebuilding the rear spoiler because I thought it was too bulky and it didn't flow well. So, to start chopping away, doing a little bit of ISO splitting again, redraw the profile of the new spoiler, and this time it should flow better. I also use Sweep 2. This time, instead of sweep one, all right. And after you sweep the surface, it's more of the mirror and merge surface. Now for the infamous patch tool. I'm going to use that to create the rear windshield. And kind of just, it's an awesome tool that Rhino has, and it tries to guess multi edges or multi lines and try to make a surface from it. And it's pretty neat. Do make sure that when you're using the patch tool, to make sure that all the lines you choose are connected and it completes the circle or uh, the loop. Because if you don't, patch is going to make a overall surface and then you're going to have to trim it yourself. So you might have to do a little bit of that too. But patch overall is an awesome tool. It works best for flat surfaces, but it also does curvy surfaces or, you know, it's, it's a pretty cool tool to use. Just don't overuse it. Here we go again. More network surfacing with tangency. Now, for, for the 458 rear end, I thought it was probably one of the best looking rear ends I've seen in a long time. So I kept it pretty much the same, with the exception of elongating it 
to give it that longer look, perhaps put a V12 in it or a V10 in it. Here, same old polyline and blending technique to get this curved swoop in there. I'm doing some trimming. Pretty self-explanatory. Well, by now I'm sure you're tired of hearing me talk. It's been about 15 minutes or so. So at this point, overall, the car is pretty much done. It's really just about tedious detailing now. I'm still going to cover it in the video, but it's going to be sped up more or less. Certain parts highlighted. I hope that you found the highlighted parts useful and informative. I also want to apologize for uh, the poor voice work or commentary. I've actually been freestyling it. This wasn't scripted or planned. I was too lazy. Feel free to contact me for the full tutorial. It's actually, that one will be better for beginners. I'll hold your hand. You'll get to see how I draw the lines and it won't be sped up. And I'll definitely talk more about my direction and my logic and my theories. But I'm just going to let some music play. First songs are by a band that is very dear to me. They're called Inference. Not the Inference, not Interference, not any of that stuff, just Inference band. I hope you like them. Please enjoy. Speak your peace 
tragedy that has come to be where so many is so empty they just stuck if you praise over here so great I don't wanna say wash it away you just stood by and watched the world you created is so lost you don't even give a second show you how to do a side mirror and a single surface. Draw a few lines and you will get a side mirror. So don't forget to check that out. Also, if you like these songs, find Inference the Band on Facebook and check out some other songs. Since for their hate, please stop, stay, appreciate, they deserve me, or 